you're in 1 Corinthians 5. We're, we're going we're gonna to read that whole chapter because it's, it's relevant to this. I'm going to read a few from 1 Corinthians cha uh, chapter 9, verse 16. I already brought up this point a little bit out of order. But 1 Corinthians 9, 16, the Bible reads, For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me, yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. It is our duty to, to preach the gospel. I mentioned this already. You know, if you believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven, that when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man cometh unto the Father but by me, if you actually believe that, then what are you doing about it? Where are your actions? Where are your works? What are you, like? you know, show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you by my faith by my works. The, how, how else are you going to show people that you have faith? Now, God knows your heart. If you never go out and preach the gospel and never win a soul to Christ, it doesn't mean you're not saved. But you do have a dead faith. You're not doing anything for the Lord. God has given us, he's committed unto us the, the ministry of reconciliation, reconciling people to God in Christ's stead. That's our job. That's our duty. Do you really believe that? That's what the Bible says. I believe it. First Corinthians chapter 5, look at verse number 1. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. There's fornication among you. And such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. It's a big deal. I saw about the church at Corinth. Hey, in your church, you've got fornication among you, and this, is, this isn't even just, I mean, fornication is bad enough. We're saying, the world doesn't even do this. The Gentiles don't even do this. You've got a guy in your church that's, that's fornicating with his father's wife. Now, I just assume that this is not his own mother, but just, you know, a, 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 a you know, stepmother or whatever. But that's bad. That's really, really bad. And, he need, and apparently he needs to address this, I mean, because they didn't get it themselves. See, verse number two, he says, and you are puffed up and not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. But see, this type of an attitude of, of oh, it's great. Hey, everybody's welcome here. Everybody's welcome. Come on in. It doesn't matter. Oh, you're with your, you're, you're fornicating with your, with your father's wife. Sure. Come on in. Is the apostle Paul okay with that? This permissive attitude. Oh, that's, don't worry about that. Don't, that Old Testament stuff. That, that stuff about sin, don't worry about that. He's calling that puffed up. Verse 3, we're, we're going to see this judgmental Paul. Oh, were you judging him? Oh, you're going to judge the God that's committing fornication with his father's wife? Who are you to judge? Uh, well, Paul's going to answer this. Verse number 3, for I verily as absent, and he's like, I'm not even there. Absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already, as though I were present, concerning him that hath so done this deed, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together in my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. I don't even need to be there, and I'm going to judge. You better believe he's judging. He's judging righteous judgment, and he gives a commandment under the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, saying, hey, when that guy's there, you cast him out and let Satan have with him, and let Satan destroy his flesh so that his soul could be saved. 